if you're planning to join the tech industry or you're planning to have one of these tech skills or maybe you want to upskill or have additional skills in tech but you do not know which field or role you should go into this video is for you you need to know various roles in this tech industry because tech companies these days are streamlining their roles and if you're not informed you're going to be learning all the programming language in the world and not specialize that means you're going to waste a lot of time learning studying even building projects but you just become a jack of all trades and master of none <music> hi everyone welcome back to my channel my name is chidima i am a software engineer a writer and a youtuber based in Lagos, Nigeria. so we are diving into the topic right away the first on my list is front-end engineers front-end engineers are in charge of layouts colors images the speed basically the ui of a website like for instance if your Jumia website or your YouTube the home page the color the beauty the images the speed the layout the animations the swipes the effects all those beautiful things that you see on the page is being developed by a front-end engineer if they use an image that is not good is going to make the web application to be slow like when someone clicks on an image it takes forever to load and again when someone clicks on next page like those little arrows that you see on website like when you want to go to the next page it takes forever to load these kind of things are being done by front-end engineers when a web application slow it makes the user experience to be really bad and horrible and the skills that a front-end engineer needs to have is to learn programming language such as html css javascript and some javascript frameworks like react and vjs so if you can learn any of these you are good to go then the second on my list is back-end engineers back-end engineers are the ones in charge of the behind the scenes of the web application take for instance when you're shopping online those login pages where you need to log in or register before you can have access to the website is being constructed by a back engineer the back-end engineers are also involved in making sure they get data and they store data in a way to be readily available for the client or the users for instance if you have registered in a website your data will be stored in a way that when you're coming in again to log in whatever you're going to log in with will match with what you used to register so if you're logging in with a wrong password or email it's going to throw you out so those conditions are statements that back-end engineers you know put on their code they are also in charge of forgotten password like if you register and you want to come back to login and you forgot your password if you don't know your password anymore you can actually ask for forgotten password and when you send in your email or whatever you'll be asked a question and if you're able to provide any of those security questions your data will be sent to the back-end engineers and they will help you set your password and allow you to re-register again with a new password so back-end engineers are basically in charge of data management making sure that store data in a way that it will be readily available for the front end the 
developers and also for the users for instance again on youtube if you are due for payment like you're due for rewards and youtube optimization is like complete and you're due for your rewards is the back end engineers that make sure that all those information are being gotten correctly before you are eligible for payment so before you can get those notifications on your account back-end engineers must have done their work with the data generated from your account and that is when you will be able to get a message that you're due for payment and those payments will be sent to you also when you're shopping on an e-commerce website backend engineers are also in charge of payments they integrate payment gateways on e-commerce websites or any web application such that there won't be any discrepancies from anywhere before your orders will be um, processed and then delivered to you so backend engineers are like for instance the car engines while the front end engineers are like how beautiful a car looks so let's see it as engine of a car and the body parts of the car the skills required for back-end engineers are the Django python the third one is full stack engineers a full stack engineer is someone who is a front-end engineer and also a back-end engineer they must know html css javascript framework like react they also know back-end like node.js the django python the css that beautifies html structures like html is the skeleton and the css is is the like pencil like take for instance uh, HTML is your face and CSS is the makeup that you apply on your face. You can't say that you want to learn front-end engineering and you want to skip CSS. You must learn CSS. So the programming language for full-stack engineers are HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, Django, MongoDB, no JS. So the next on my list is mobile engineers, mobile application engineers, or mobile developers. Uh, mobile developers are people who are in charge of building applications that run on mobile phones, like mobile devices. They build mobile applications that run majorly on phones. So in this field, you either decide to go for applications that run on Android iOS devices for for mobile app engineers you decide to either build applications that run on Android operating system or you want to build applications for cross platforms um skills that you need to learn is Kotlin Swift Java Flutter and so many of them so kotlin is for applications that run for only android why swift is for cross platform flutter is also for cross platform if you are someone who is interested in building beautiful mobile applications you would decide which one you want to concentrate on if it's building applications that run on android application systems or you want to build applications for cross platforms so mobile applications they are like in charge of both the front end and the back end functionality both the design and the functionality of how the application works so they are in charge of speed the colors the images technicalities the login registration the access the database management everything like everything about the mobile application done by the mobile app engineers so there is no front end and back end 
So they usually work with product managers who go to meet stakeholders. Product managers are in charge of meeting the stakeholders, the owners, the companies that own the mobile application itself. So they come back to the office to relay how the application will look like. They also work with UI UX designers to bring in beautiful designs. So if you're interested in building beautiful mobile applications, you have to learn Swift, Flutter, Java, Kotlin. Then you may be confused along the line on which area to concentrate on. But I'll just advise you to learn everything. Then you can now later on so the next one on my list is the DevOps engineers. DevOps is a short form for developers and operations. So they are in charge of scalability, performances, optimization of applications, making sure that bandwidth and locations are not of a problem to your application. Like anyone in anywhere in the state or outside of this country, anywhere home and abroad or inside the village, can have access to your application and use it. Good DevOps engineers make sure that even while you are inside the water, you can access network, you can access application, you can do a lot of things. So if you're shipping an application, you must make sure you have a DevOps engineer that will help you check for the bandwidth problem, location problem, and make sure that no problem at all. You can go in swiftly and customers can use your application without any problem. So DevOps engineers develop tools for developers. Most times they do a lot of CI CD development, continuous integrations. There's no good web application that will run smoothly without DevOps engineers. They are testing and maintaining infrastructure, automation and deployment of code. So for DevOps engineers, there are lots of technologies they use. Java, they use Jenkins, and they use Docker. So if you are interested in learning DevOps engineering, you should be able to know at least two of these technologies. The next on my list is data science. Data science is all about data management, data manipulation, and it has its other variants under it. We have data analysis, we have data engineering. Data engineers are in charge of developing pipelines you know, in order to fetch this data easily for data scientists to make use of it. Like companies need data to survive, um, supermarket needs data for inventory, banks need data for records, millions of data like in months and a lot of these records are meaningless because they come in, sometimes they come in as a raw data. If nothing is done on those raw data, it is meaningless. So data engineers create, build pipelines for this data to be generated in a best possible way. Like they get this data and they clean them and they make sure they are readily available for use. So data analytics involves the analysis of this data to make sense of it. Banks will not know how cards are being declined like every weekend. They need to make sense of the data generated every weekend like from friday saturday and sunday evening and data analytics analyzes data and know like they can analyze based on location based on the age based on the weather based on whatever and then push the analysis to data scientists which in turn use scientific method and statistical method most times to run analysis and make then present the solution to the management. So if you really love to work with data and you love to make sense of data to make to bring solutions to companies, 
you would need to learn skills such as SQL, Python, Power BI, and Excel. Like Excel is the most commonest that people go for these days. You need to start from Excel first of all before you graduate and move into SQL, then Python. Python also is very easy to learn. So I would encourage any of you if you are interested and you want to make companies make beautiful analysis, make predictions on data and know why there is problem at any point. Um, you need to learn Java, you need to learn SQL, you need to learn Excel, you need to learn Power BI. Power BI is for presentation. Okay, so the next one on my list is cyber security. Cyber security is a very good tech role, like companies are hiring them non-stop as a cyber security personnel you are in charge of providing security measures to make sure systems services networks and infrastructures of companies are safe from external attacks there are a couple of things that you need to learn take any of these certifications and exam before you can delve deeply into cyber security role like it's something you need to do first before you can tell anybody you want to go into cyber security role. And most of these educations are online from big companies and big organizations and schools. One of these educations is CompTIA, Ethical Hacking, SSCP, System Security, Certified Personnel, CISM, Certified Information Security Management. You can take any of these certifications. Then after that, you find a place where you can do internship, learn on the job, like work experience. Get yourself someone that is already into the job and you know, follow the person to work. For some companies, they, they have a process. You need to apply, then they check if you have gone through some of the requirements like if you have a degree, some don't ask for degree, some will ask for the certification. Some companies require that you have some kind of certification to be sure that you're a serious person. So the primary focus for you should not be how much you're going to earn while you're going to be on the job. The primary focus should be on learning and growing. Like when you're good on the job, that's when your payment will start coming. Please do not forget to subscribe. If you love this video, please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.